It's while the Capitol was on lockdown outside, it was a chaotic scene with a massive law enforcement response. Tonight, we have firsthand reaction from Steve Bainan. He's a reporter covering Congress for Military.com. He was on the ground when this all unfolded. Steve, we're about to show some video that you actually shot yourself. Let's talk about what this was like and, and maybe was there fear involved with what you saw today? Yeah, so it was definitely a, a, a chaotic scene when it first started, but things did quell pretty quickly once it became apparent that there was uh, no reason to believe that there was any other future potential threats. But the National Guard uh, that was already at the Capitol uh, quickly mobilized, as you see, with their with their right gear there to to secure the the scene where the incident happened. How long did this take for you to feel comfortable with the law enforcement response on the scene? Uh, Pretty quickly, once they got all the press in the spot that you see right there, that's uh, that's basically that was our limit of advance, um, and then that's where the guard ran by us. Um, but yeah, the, there was no reason to believe at the time that there was anything further going on. There were, there was no indication of any other. There was no mob. There were there weren't any additional protesters in, and it was uh, pretty apparent the suspect uh, was apprehended uh, pretty quickly, and then we later later found out he was killed by police. There was a lot of movement on the scene. But uh, I would say that the tone was uh, a lot more calm than maybe some of the images might suggest with uh, the guards been standing there uh, barricading the streets with their shields and batons. How did you get the information, Steve, that there was something going on and how quickly did you realize you needed to get out there or were you already out there working on a different story? Uh, I, I live pretty close to the hill, actually, um, and I had multiple staffers uh, that work on Capitol Hill send me the text alert that they got that they basically had a lockdown going on. No one was allowed in or out of the building at the time. Um, and so I, I immediately went to the hill, uh, started talking to guardsmen and officers there, um, trying to piece together what was happening, mind you, with any chaotic situation like this. Uh, the information wasn't together yet, um, so it was probably another you know half hour, hour before we really knew what was going on. At, at the time, I just showed up knowing that there were shots fired and that involved uh, at least one or two officers. Steve, I have to imagine everybody there on the scene, including National Guards, men and women, uh, obviously had 90 days ago, roughly almost three months to the day when January 6th happened on their minds. How was the response and, and, and how much do you think that weighed on everyone at the scene, media included? Yeah, so the, the National Guard's been at the Capitol, and they've had a pretty significant presence since uh, the January 6th assault on the building. Um, there was an initial response of 27,000 Guardsmen, and now that number's down to about 2,300, and it, it encompasses about a dozen or so states. Um, and as your reporter previously stated, that there's been a lot of fencing and razor wire around the Capitol. Most of that's been taken down. Um, there's been a bipartisan call from lawmakers on the Hill for the Guard's mission to end. Even the Guard chief himself, General Hokinson, uh, suggested the Guard's mission should be terminated uh, because so the Guard can re reorientate its focus on other priorities such as vaccinations and testing sites. And uh, the Guard is also still juggling uh, abroad missions in Africa, Afghanistan, and, and Syria. So there, there's been a lot on the Guard's plate, especially for the past year. And uh, these soldiers, they also juggle civilian jobs. They're, they're teachers, they're, they're the person that changes your oil, uh, they're, they're journalists, uh, they're, they're lawmakers. They're, so it's been a, a lot going on for them lately. Um, and I imagine a lot of them are pretty uh, strained at this point by uh, conversations with a couple of soldiers I've had. Steve Bainan from military.com. Steve, thank you. Thank you so much.